Praise the Lord, saints. Welcome to today's Seed Time and Harvest Broadcast. I'm Bishop Hutchinson. I'm so blessed and privileged and highly favored to have another opportunity to come and speak life to you today. I pray that your day is blessed wherever you are around the world listening to this broadcast. We are excited to come before you today. We're going to have a teaching about ordinary faith, ordinary people, extraordinary God. And so I pray that you have your Bible, your paper, and pencils, that you'll be prepared to take notes and study along with us. We encourage you to do this, saints. We want you to be able to search the scriptures right along with us to see whether the things that we say are so or not. We're going to be talking about how oftentimes we assume that we have to have some type of extraordinary faith. Sometimes we may assume that we need to be extraordinary people in order to get extraordinary results. But we're going to talk today about how each and every one of us, using our ordinary faith as ordinary people, can re- receive and bring about extraordinary results in your life. And so you definitely want to be sure to take notes and tune in and let your family and friends know about this message. Now, if you're going to be studying along with us, we're going to be looking at a text from Matthew chapter 17, verses 14 through 20. That is going to be the foundational text that we're going to look at for today's lesson. And so I encourage you to Turn there or make note of that portion of scripture that you can refer to later on and also search search out the scriptures to see whether the things that we say are so or not. Praise the Lord. So let's go ahead and take a look at our text for today's lesson. I'm reading from the New American Standard Version, Matthew chapter 17, verse 14, reads as such. When they came to the crowd, a man came up to Jesus, falling on his knees before him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and is very ill, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. And Jesus answered and said, You unbelieving and perverted generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him here to me. Verse 18. And Jesus rebuked him, and the demon came out of him, and the boy was cured at once. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not drive it out? And he said to them, Because of the littleness of your faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible. To you, ordinary faith, ordinary people, ordinary results. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We acknowledge your sovereignty, your lordship, your power, dominion, and glory. We thank you today that you've allowed us this opportunity to come before your presence. I pray and I thank you for every person who is listening to the sound of my voice around the world. I thank you for the faith that you have deposited into them. For your word says you have given every man a measure of faith. And Father, I thank you today that you will activate and that you will water that seed of faith that's already imparted in each person today. That you will water that seed, that that seed may be exercised and that it may manifest in the lives of those who put their faith and trust in you. 
So we thank you today that our faith will manifest in healing in sick bodies, that our faith will manifest in salvation for lost souls, that our faith will manifest in provision where there is life. And, Lord, we thank you and we praise you in advance. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we worship you. And we authorize the Holy Spirit to take action on our behalf today. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And amen. Praise the Lord. Again, welcome to our Sea Simon House broadcast, Saints of God. We're talking today about ordinary faith, ordinary people, extraordinary God, which brings about extraordinary results. So we took a look at Matthew chapter 17. We looked at verses 14 through 20. And I want you to key in on verse number 20. That's going to be the central verse that we're going to examine as we talk about this week's lesson. But we see in the context of why Jesus said what he said to the particular believers in this text, and that's why we read verses 14 down through 19. It set up the stage for what to answer the question that the disciples asked him. Now, there's also a follow-up verse, if you can read verse 21, which Jesus gave them even more of an idea into why they were having or experiencing difficulties in casting out the demon out of this one particular individual. And he said that this kind comes out only by prayer and fasting. That's verse 21. But we want to, we're going to key in on verse number 20, which is something that is available to each and every one of us today. It's very important that we understand this because as I started this broadcast, many times we come to assume that in order to get extraordinary results, we must have extraordinary faith and be extraordinary people. But as this scripture that Jesus is pointing to, he's pointing to the man's father, he's pointing to his disciples in response to their question in verse number 19 where he says, they ask Jesus, why could we not drive it out? Why could we not do what you just did? And then Jesus says in verse 20, he, and the Holy Spirit speaks to us today, says because of their littleness of faith or because of your lack of faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, in some translations, but if you have faith, somebody said have faith, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say or you will be able to say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move or obey you, and nothing will be impossible to you. So let's dig a little deeper into that to understand uh, more deeply what the Holy Spirit wants us to get out of that verse is not of this communication with Jesus. So first thing we said to them, he identified the fact that they were having little faith, that they, that they didn't have the type of faith that, that was necessary for the events to take place that they witnessed. It's not that they didn't have faith. It's that they had the wrong type of faith. You see, they did not really expect the situation to improve unless some extraordinary thing happens in this person's life. And many times we get to the place where we face lingering situations. In the case of this particular young man, he had been dealing with this issue for a long time, and he had created a, a lot of confusion and havoc in the life of this family. And the disciples had obviously been ministering to this man and this family, attempting to heal him, to release him, to deliver him, to allow him to be set free. 
And I think the disciples were relying on some of their previous experiences in casting out demons. I think the disciples were relying on some of the past experiences to say, hey, it's no problem. We know how to do this at this point. But we see as they encountered this man, and they tried every attempt as they had did previously in other situations. But in this particular situation, all the things that they had tried before did not work in, with this young man. And so finally the father, after allowing the disciples to attempt to deliver this young man, he finally came to Jesus. And this is where verse 14 starts off with where it says, And when they came to Jesus, a man came up to him, falling on his knees, that is, in worship to Jesus. This man acknowledged the, the lordship of Jesus Christ. It says, He fell at his knees in worship before him, saying or acknowledging Lord, in verse 15, which means this man worshiped Jesus as his master and as his ruler. And he made a petition, he made a supplication, he made a request unto Jesus. He says, first, after acknowledging the lordship, his ruler, he pleaded or petitioned that Jesus would have mercy on his son. A lot of times, we, 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 if we key in on verse 20, we'll forget of the anointing to manifest in this man's life. I think if we look in these be uh, deceived into thinking that it's just simple as a hand clap and a declaration and demons will automatically just obey us just because we say certain words or phrases for instance but the disciples had tried that already and, and thanks to God I don't know where you are in your particular life and or circumstance but I believe that each and every one of us can learn something as we examine this portion of Scripture about how we can also exercise our ordinary faith as ordinary people in order to bring about extraordinary results, not because we are extraordinary, but because we serve an extraordinary God. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. And I believe that's what the disciples failed to realize in this case. But I see, as I look at verses 14 and 15, I see that the young man's father did not ignore the fact that if anything extraordinary was going to happen, it had to come through my extraordinary God. And this is something that each and every one of us need to realize and recognize and acknowledge today. If we expect to receive the extraordinary results, we got to pray, praise, and we have to worship, and we have to recognize Jesus as the extraordinary God. And that's what we see in verses 14 and 15 when the man came to Jesus. The first thing he did was not to make a request. The first thing he did was worship. The word worship means to bow down. We see the man fell. The scripture says he fell to his knees before him. And then he said, Lord. So, thanks to God, I, I want you to really dig into this right here. You have to create the atmosphere. You, 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 you have to uh, let God know. You have to submit yourself to him. You have to surrender yourself and surrender your situations and surrender your circumstances to him, to the extraordinary God. Yes, we don't need to be extraordinary. Our faith don't need to be extraordinary. But we need to have faith in an extraordinary God. Each and every one of us can learn a lesson from this man as he approached Jesus. First, he worshiped Jesus. 
Then he recognized Jesus as Lord, Master, and Ruler. He made a petition to that Jesus would have mercy on his son. And he described his son's condition to Jesus. He says, for he is a lunatic and is very ill, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. I brought him, verse 16, I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. They could not deliver him. They could not set him free. And then verse 17, and Jesus answered and said, you unbelieving and perverted generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him here to me. And so once they brought the young man to Jesus, it said Jesus rebuked him, and the demon came out of him, and the boy was cured at once. Thanks to God, why and how did Jesus do immediately what obviously the disciples had been trying to do for quite a while, perhaps minutes or hours or even days? They had been attempting to, as the Father said, cure him of this lunatic spirit and this spirit of infirmity that caused him to fall into fire and often into water. So Jesus identified some of the the reasons why they could not do it. First, because of unbelief, and then he said because of perversion. Not necessarily because the people were living in a perverted, sinful state, but because they were believing in methods rather than God. They were believing in procedures and processes instead of believing in God. So therefore, their faith had been perverted because their faith was placed on the process and the procedures and not the God who could bring about deliverance. And I think a lot of times, thanks to God, we also are guilty of placing faith in processes and procedures instead of placing our faith in God. And so as Jesus rebuked the crowd, perhaps today the Holy Spirit is convicting you that perhaps you've been trying to do things because you've seen somebody else do it this way. Perhaps you are trying to do things because you listen to somebody say, if you do this, then this will happen. And I say to you what Jesus said to the people in this text, you unbelieving and perverted generation. We have to learn as ordinary people that we can exercise ordinary faith. As long as that faith is in an extraordinary God, we will see extraordinary results. Somebody ought to give God praise today. Yes, 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 thanks to God. We don't want to be uh, brutes. We don't want to find ourselves staying in the condition of being a a wicked generation, a, a, a generation that has perverted faith. So instead of having this type of perverted faith, that is, believing in processes and procedures that will place our ordinary faith in the extraordinary God. This is what they needed to do, thanks to God. This is what we all need to do and continue to do in our lives, and we're going to see the results that we expect to get. So there we see Jesus dealt with some of the problem in the people. And immediately they brought the young man to Jesus, and Jesus, as verse 18 says again, Jesus rebuked him, and the demon came out of him, and the boy was cured at once. And next we see the disciples come to Jesus. After this event had took place in public, 
and all the crowd has gone home. The young man has gone back home with his family, and Jesus and his disciples are later on into that evening. Verse 19, and perhaps some of us need to inquire of the Lord today. Some of us may have situations that the father has with his son. You may be facing a situation with your son or your daughter. You may be facing a situation with your spouse. You may be facing a situation with your neighbor or friends or other family members. Maybe people on your job. Maybe we need to inquire of the Lord. No matter how long we may have been in Christ or no matter how new you are to Christ, we need to continually inquire of the Lord. But we have to approach him in the same way that this young man's father did. He has either to celebrate and rejoice in the man's, the young man's deliverance, but we need to learn some of the ways in which that deliverance came about. And we saw that it came about not just, uh, it didn't come through any of the disciples' workings. It did not come through any of the procedures and processes of man. It only came about through an extraordinary God. And if you're going to see, if you expect to see, children of God, if you want to see extraordinary results in your life, begin by worshiping and acknowledging our extraordinary God. Let's do it right now. You, you, you don't come and just present your problems to Jesus. That's not what this man in this case did. And that's why we looked at, and I want you to really examine the verses of Scripture that we're looking at today, verses 14 through 20 of Matthew chapter 7. So after all this is taking place again in verse 19, the disciples came to Jesus privately and said or asked him, why could we not drive it out? This was the question that Jesus' disciples asked him in private. Perhaps you right now, wherever you are, I don't know what situation you may be going through or what situation you may go through or situation you've been through. But it's okay for you to approach Jesus if you've been trying in vain, it seems like, to bring about some type of deliverance, maybe in your family members, friends, or somebody's life, or perhaps even in your own life, and nothing seems to be working. I'll, if I were you, I would take this time right now to inquire of the Lord, the same way we see his disciples inquired of him, and they asked him, why could we not drive it out? You may want to ask him, why could I not be healed, or why can I not be delivered? Why can I not be free? Why can I not be made whole? Or whatever you or situations around your life is. This would be a good time right now, thanks to God. This would be a good time right now. You've been dealing with situations, and, and you're disappointed, and you're hurt, and you're, you're almost about to lose faith. Perhaps your faith, even the faith that you once had, is starting to dwindle. Jesus says in response to their question in verse 19, he says in verse 20, and he, being Jesus, said, Hallelujah, because of the littleness of your faith, he says, because of this misguided faith, because of this type of perverted faith you have, Jesus says, this is the reason why you could not do it. And then Jesus says, for truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, that is, if you had ordinary faith, if you had faith, in God. Hallelujah. Not faith in the process. Not faith in the procedure. But faith, hallelujah, in an extraordinary God. Hallelujah. Thanks to God. Because whatever you place your faith in is what's going to manifest in your life. So if you place faith in the people and processes and procedures, then that's what's going to have to happen in order to bring about the miracle or breakthrough in your life. But, as Jesus is saying to his disciples here, if you have faith, that is, if you have ordinary faith, 
just simple faith in God. He described it as faith the size of a mustard seed. If you had this type of faith, and I pray right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of his Holy Spirit, that each and every one of us would let go of the process and don't let go of the procedures. You, when you deal with the processes and procedures, and a lot of times when you deal with people, you're placing your faith in those things. And when those things fail you, you want to think that God has failed. But your faith wasn't in God. Your faith was in the process. Your faith was in the procedure. Your faith was in the people. Jesus said, that's littleness in faith. That is perverted faith. But if you're going to have faith the size of a mustard seed, this is the God type of faith. You will be able to say to this mountain or this illness or this disease or this situation or circumstance, move from here to there. Move from wherever you are to where I command you to go. Jesus says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing or no thing will be impossible to you. So what do we see here, children of God, as we talk about extraordinary results? How can it happen in your life? Well, it takes ordinary faith from ordinary people in an extraordinary God which brings about extraordinary results. We can't skip through any of, the, any of the steps in this message today, thanks to God. If you've been trying to do it your way, if you've been following other people's instructions, following their process, following their procedures, I urge you today to move away from that littleness of faith and have God kind of faith. Faith that is not perverted by people, processes, or procedures, but have the type of faith that Jesus described, faith as a grain of mustard seed, that it may appear to be so small that you can barely even see it. Hallelujah. But it only takes that ordinary type of faith, change to God exercised by ordinary people to bring about extraordinary results. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise today. Lord, I thank you and I praise you today for your word that has gone forth. I thank you that it penetrates hearts and minds of believers. I thank you that your word goes forth now to bind the work of the enemy and to loose your people, God, not because we are special, but because you are special. Not because we are extraordinary, but because you are. Father, we acknowledge you today as Lord, and we worship you. We surrender our situations, we surrender our circumstances to you today. And we exercise our ordinary faith as ordinary people in an extraordinary God. And, Lord, we thank you today. We believe you right now. We praise you even now for extraordinary results. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we give you praise today. Oh, thanks to God. I, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, for blessing the hearers today that they are going to use that mustard seed, ordinary faith that in them, no matter how little or small it is, I pray that you will use it today for your glory. Bring about their healing and deliverance. Bring about their salvation, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Ordinary faith. Ordinary people. Extraordinary God.